Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you guys my clownfish breeding setup. Okay, the first thing I want to show you guys is basically the placement of my setup. It's in my garage basically because I can customize it and put anything in here I want. Um, I got a really nice couch just to chill on, you know. My desk where I keep all my info, desk lamp, I got a heater because it gets really cold here. Um, here's my broodstock tank, it's a 40 gallon breeder divided with plexiglass. The plexiglass is painted black with Krylon Fusion. The way you use that is just apply multiple coats to it um, and then let it cure for about two days. Then you can put it in. You don't have to worry about it killing your fish or flaking off. Um, I got some auto feeders up here. These are by Eheim. I don't know the exact name of them. Overflow box. Um, this top I made just out of egg crate. You buy it at Home Depot. Homeco, whatever you got. My lighting is um, just duct taped on. It's kind of crazy looking. But this is this is a blue LED strip for a night light because that you do want that to condition your broodstock. These are the daylights. Um, they don't have to be very bright. Don't worry about spectrum or anything. They don't really need anything special at all, as long as it's on a constant schedule. So as long as you have a timer, which I got right here, um, I keep it on a 14 our photic period that just simulates um, the sort of time of year when clownfish would spawn in the wild. Um, in terms of my filtration, I'll show you. So I run an Esh Hop Sump. I think it's 20 gallons. It's rated for a 100 gallon tank. So starts out with you got the filter sock right here. Then you got my refugium, which I have. Um, just different um, algaes in here. This is a pair of clowns that I actually had to displace because I got a new one. I'll show you them later. Pretty big, deep sand bed for anaerobic and aerobic um, bacteria. We got sort of crushed coral here to maintain proper pH. Some coral frags up here because I got a nice light LEDs there. I uh, purchased them really cheap and then to sort of DIY thing. Temperature monitor keep it around 80 degrees that's fine you got a skimmer really nice skimmers and reef octopus media reactor um, iron activated carbon in it um, ammonia alert patch and a 200 watt heater it's probably best and I'm in a pretty cold climate I also run a auto top off it's the Tunzi Osmolator you can see the return tube right back there it's black and the um, the actual probe is in there with a return pump um, with yeah it's really nice because it's got redundancy um I run a canister filter just in case like say my overflow box were to get clogged or my pump stop stopped working in this tank um, stopped getting filtered by the sump this guy would still keep filtering it for a while and I could basically maintain it for a long time here's my reservoir for my um, auto top off just a five gallon bucket with the pump in it. Here are all my tubes I keep for water changes and stuff. Um, that's pretty important to have stuff like that. Got an extra 10 gallon tank over there, some cleaning supplies. You need a lot of duct tape. You will need because you need to tape up wires, stuff like that. Oh, pretty important thing. Keep all your wires and power strips above the tank or pretty close to above it so that the tank overflows, you're not gonna screw up all your stuff, have a fire and your tank's not gonna die within a couple hours. I keep a couple really useful stuff up here, you know, nets, brine trip net, um, uh, glass cleaner. Up here I got my test kit, hydrometer, and some storage areas for different air tubing and equipment. Um, just a little measure is useful. Got some different supplements, Chloramax, C-Lab Prime, dechlorinator, brine shrimp eggs right here, more 10 gallon tanks up there. Um, Here's actually my larval rearing setup. 10 gallon tank, three sides blacked out. Um, this table, I was lucky with this table. It's, it's, a, it's a cool table, just really simple. The good thing about this is actually white so that you can actually see how much detritus is on the bottom of your larval tank. 50 watt heater is fine. Um, keep the temperature around 80 degrees. Air stone by the heater to disperse heat. Extra air stone for redundancy thermometer and ammonia alert badge. Um, you're going to want to black this side out in the first couple days the, the larvae are alive. 
because they only want light coming from one direction. 24 hour lighting is fine, nothing special. Just make sure it's not too bright. You can always dim it with like a cloth or something. Just from Home Depot, pretty simple. Uh, in terms of air pumps, we got this one here, which is pretty nice, I got it off of Amazon. This supplies water to my Rotifers, which is a CCS starter kit, is the bucket and everything in it, from Reed Mariculture. Rotifers from Reed Mariculture. I feed them RG Complete, also from Reed Mariculture. It's a pretty simple setup. They have a guide on how to keep Rotifers. I'm not going to go into that. They're pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Um, here's my Artemia hatcheries. They're just San Francisco Bay Brine Trip hatcheries attached to this air pump here. And that air pump is for the larval tank and my grow out tank over there. Here I got road for sieve because you don't want to put that water in with your larval clowns. Road for floss just because I can. A little measure for food I can do. Defrost my mysis in there. You can also use that to um, measure out salt for water changes. Latex gloves just because they're good for keeping your cultures clean. Little cabinets like in here I got a razor and it's really good to have syringes, um, notepad, emails, stuff on that. Definitely want a flashlight to check on your eggs. Ruler's handy. This is another pin light. It's really useful. Just put that back in. Got food here. Um, my grow out system is pretty simple. You can see a little bit of a couple clowns in the back. They're pretty young. Sponge filter. Some habitat. I think this is a 100 watt heater. That's correct. This light, you do want a timer, like 12 hours a day is fine. I got a calendar just to keep track of stuff. Basically, that's my setup, and just some stuff I wanted to add is these are my spawning clowns. They're red and black clowns, they're cinnamons. We got these frostbite pair, right here. Cinnamons, frostbites. I mean, these guys I just got in today. Beautiful clown. That one's a phantom, and that one's a lightning maroon pair. They, uh, them I actually got in from iBlueWater, a guy named Bob helped me get them. Really, really cool guy, sent me videos of them, helped work with me, gave me a great price, really good service. He's actually going to be buying one of my clowns that I had in my refugium. So just definitely check out those websites. Um, one is iBlueWater, um, the, and the other is Reed Mariculture. They're just like the best places you can get stuff to breed clowns. In terms of information on how to breed them, um, there's like clownfish breeding. There's a website. There's a wiki how page um, If you go to nano reef, there's a page by it's called pickles guide to, to breeding clownfish really useful stuff there Basically, this is my clownfish breeding setup Clownfish breeding is really rewarding. Just make sure you know what you're doing in salt water before you try to endeavor this because it, It's definitely not easy, but it's not too hard either. So thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more videos Okay, bye.